For years, gardeners have been told one simple rule. Add more compost. It's become the answer to every soil problem, from poor growth to compacted beds to worm die-off. But here's the hard truth. Compost alone can't bring a dead soil back to life. If your soil has gone stale, dry, and lifeless, dumping wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow of compost isn't going to fix it. In fact, it can make things worse by starving the very microbes you're trying to revive. The real secret to rebuilding soil health lies not in how much compost you add, but in how you feed the microbial community living underneath it. Once you understand what actually fuels microbes and how to balance their diet, your soil starts regenerating on its own. Compost doesn't feed microbes, it just gives them a place to live. Compost is a valuable soil conditioner, but it's not a full meal for microbes. It acts more like a sponge in habitat than a buffet. Mature compost, the kind that's dark and crumbly, has already gone through most of its decomposition. The nutrients inside it are stable and slow to release, meaning the microbes that decompose fresh organic matter don't find much to eat there. What compost really does best is improve structure, retain moisture, and provide a protected environment where microbes can live. But to actually grow microbial populations, those microbes need a food source rich in simple carbon compounds, things like sugars, starches, and proteins that are long gone from finished compost. Microbes need both energy and nitrogen, and compost alone can't supply that balance. Soil microbes thrive on a diet built around the carbon to nitrogen ratio. When they have too much carbon, they go dormant. And, you know, when they have too much nitrogen, they overheat and burn out. Finished compost sits somewhere in the middle, but it doesn't provide the fast, digestible food microbes crave. To wake up a dead soil, you need to feed microbes the way you'd feed a starter culture for bread or kombucha, with something active and alive. That's why adding materials like molasses, oat water, rotting fruit, or diluted manure tea makes such a difference. These feed microbes immediately, creating a burst of biological activity that compost alone can't match. For example, one proven mix involves blending one tablespoon of unsulfured molasses into a gallon of dechlorinated water, then adding two handfuls of mature compost as a microbial seed. Let it sit for 24 hours in the shade with light aeration, then pour it over the soil surface or mix it into mulch. Within days, you'll notice an earthy smell returning. That's microbial life coming back. Many gardeners make the mistake of thinking more compost equals more fertility. But when compost is piled too thick or tilled in excessively, it can create an anaerobic zone where oxygen disappears. Microbes that depend on oxygen, especially the beneficial bacteria and fungi that build soil structure, begin to die off, leaving behind the kind of slimy, sour-smelling layer that repels worms and locks away nutrients. You know, healthy soil really needs those air pockets. It's all about moisture regulation and having organic matter that breaks down slowly from the top down. Over composting, well, it can actually smother that natural cycle. So, here's a better approach for you. Try layering compost lightly, no more than one to two inches thick. Then, cover it with leaves, straw, or even shredded paper to create a breathing mulch. This method keeps oxygen flowing and moisture balanced, all while protecting those crucial microbial colonies near the surface. Over time, this compost and mulch will naturally blend into humus, and that's really the true end goal, isn't it? When you look at soil as a living ecosystem, it becomes clear that variety matters more than bulk. The more diverse the inputs, the more diverse the microbial population. A pile built only from kitchen scraps or lawn clippings won't feed the full chain of life underground. Microbes evolve to break down a mix of materials, 
woody matter, soft greens, animal inputs, and sugars. A garden that only gets compost lacks that complexity. To restore that balance, you can introduce simple diversity layers every few weeks. Mix small amounts of leaf mold, coffee grounds, aged manure, and bio-waste like banana peels or cabbage scraps into your mulch zone rather than your compost pile. So, this basically mimics the forest floor where countless organisms are constantly breaking down materials at different stages. When you do this, you're no longer forcing the soil to rely on just one food source. You're actually giving it a complete living pantry. Even with the perfect blend of compost and feed materials, microbes just can't survive without stable moisture. Dry soil kills them as fast as starvation. To keep microbial populations thriving, the soil surface must never be left bare. That's where mulching becomes your insurance policy. A layer of mulch, about 2-3 to three inches thick, made from straw, chopped leaves, or even old cardboard, keeps the temperature steady, traps dew and humidity, and shelters microbes from harsh sun and wind. For a quick microbial boost before mulching, gardeners often use what's called a microbial slurry. You just blend a handful of compost, a piece of overripe fruit, and a cup of water. Then, pour it straight onto the soil and cover immediately with mulch. The fruit sugars activate bacteria, the compost seeds the soil with microbial strains, and the mulch locks in moisture. Within about a week, worms and fungal threads start returning, re-establishing the foundation of living soil. True soil revival happens when microbes' roots and organic matter cycle together. Healthy soil isn't just about what you add, it's about what happens after. Microbes digest organic matter, release nutrients, and create channels that roots can follow. Roots, in turn, feed the microbes with exudates, simple sugars that act as continuous food. Compost alone can't start that loop, but once microbes are fed and active, they'll multiply and sustain themselves naturally. The key is to avoid disturbing that balance with constant tilling or chemical fertilizers, which break the microbial chain every time. To put it simply, compost is the home, but the real life of your soil depends on the kitchen inside it. Feed the microbes with energy, give them air and cover, and they'll rebuild the soil for you. If your compost hasn't been delivering results, it's not because compost doesn't work, it's because microbes are starving. Once you start feeding them properly, everything changes. Your soil grows richer without endless inputs, your plants resist stress naturally and your garden begins to sustain itself. That's the Hydro Haven way, working with biology, not against it. If you found this guide helpful, subscribe and share it with a gardener who's tired of dead soil and ready to bring their ground back to life.